Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2 and I'm doing another review and this time I saw 47 Ronin. Um, being the otaku that I am, I absolutely love <laughs> this movie from start to finish. The costumes were absolutely dazzling, the scenery was so panoramic and just breathtaking. It was absolutely gorgeous to look at. Uh, the CGI was very seamless and just awe-inspiring. I was literally transfixed the whole entire time. And I'm not going to tell you the tale itself, but it begins with Kai, a young boy who was abandoned by his mother. And apparently he was raised by the Tengu. And if you know anything about Japanese mythology, you know what Tengu are. They're basically demons, or the um, they're bird-like. Uh, if you watch Ancient Aliens, you also know what Tengu are. <laughs> um, so it has that very um, supernatural feel to it, I thought. And it's very mystical and um, draws you in immediately. It just fixes your attention and you are dazzled the entire time you watch it. And Keanu Reeves, who plays the role of Kai, I, I thought that he did really a sensational job. I like the uh, the witch, or she's actually a kitsune, but um, she's a shifter, but her name's um, Yuki, which I thought was very appropriate for her. Um, I loved her character in um, Akira, or they called him Kira. Uh, um, I liked all the different characters that were involved, in, including um, Mika, and then of course there was a, a Riku. Uh, Riku was a, more of a minor character, but she has some very good lines, and so does uh, Mika. And Mika and Kai have uh, a very special relationship from the very beginning of the film, and it's really beautiful. It's just absolutely uh, touching, I think. And uh, being um, a supporter of love in that form, I, I just thought that it was something that was really poetic and uh, just sensational and very moving. And there were some moments where I actually cried in this film, and uh, I learned a little bit watching the movie as well. Um, and uh, I was educated, so I really enjoyed it, and it just makes me want to go to Japan that much more. And I'm hoping that I can sometime in my life. And uh, <laughs> hopefully they won't think that I'm some kind of loud, obnoxious jerk. I, I'm not going to be. I'm I'm more of a a fan that I will. I'm very polite. <laughs> Um, I will probably be more um, demure and shy because I won't know what to say to them right at, at first because I will be so overwhelmed and I might even cry. I probably will cry. Um, but I'm, I'm a different kind of fan. I'm, I'm, um, I get really passionate about the things I enjoy, but I'm, I'm not one of those people that will you know, hoop and holler and, yeah, man. Woo! You know, not one of those people. I'm, I'm just more of the, one of the more. I get really excited, and I get. Um, I'll have fangirl moments where I go squee, and I, I don't really, you know, scream and yell. And, no, I don't. I don't do any of that. I'm. I'm more subdued. I guess the word is. But there are a lot of moments in this film that I thought. Ah! I mean, this, I thought this is awesome. Or, um, you know, this is incredible. This is absolutely fantastic and it was just um, tremendous it, it truly was phenomenal and every moment it was like looking at a picture and I wanted to live in that picture <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, everybody did just an absolutely splendid job and the cast members were mostly Japanese because I saw the names and uh, 
one of the surnames was Tanaka, and I'm actually going to give you a little bit of background about myself here, but um, in many of my dreams, I have seen what I would call my spirit guide, and for you know, he really doesn't have an official name, but I call him Tanaka. The reason I call him Tanaka is because, well, when I, when I first met him, he was really tall, and he had really long, dark uh, black hair, and um, he wore a samurai robe, and uh, he, he never had a sword on him, but I, I knew he was samurai, and he's always there to protect me or give me wisdom, and tell me if I'm on the right path or not and later on in life um, more recently I would see him again and he wasn't above me I was actually looking down at him and uh, I thought it was very interesting that he was now seven before he was I'm not sure what his age was because as far as I know just like um, Black people, Asians don't really age. They just look the same all the time. They're they're eternally young, because their skin is just um I don't know why, but they just have such good genes. <laughs> they don't crack. Um, I looked at him. I thought Tanaka, why are you so small? And he said, Well, you've uh, the the student has surpassed the math. Well, he said to me in my last dream I had about him, I haven't seen him recently, but he said the student has surpassed the master. That that was the last uh, dream I had about him. But, um, you know, Sylvia, who's now dearly departed, she always said that we all have guides. And I know he's my guide. I, I didn't really know I had one in, until I started having dreams about him. But I instantly knew him, and I know he's... Um, there with me even though I can't physically see him but I saw that name and I thought yeah that's a nudge Tanaka I mean who would think that that name would show up because that's what I call my guide and you know it's just weird that I don't know why I call him Tanaka but he's just I gave him that name I, I'm sorry I got off on that track but just reminded me of that so that was my little nudge for today and I think that that was just a, a way of showing me that I am on the, the right pathway toward making my visions become reality. Um, I give 47 Ronin two thumbs way up out of the ce ceiling, blast them on out of there. It was absolutely spectacular. It, it truly was. It is a marvel. It is eye candy and ear candy. I'm not sure who did the soundtrack, but the soundtrack is just, I would love the soundtrack too. It's, it's absolutely sensational because they have some of the bamboo flute, which I love, love, love to hear bamboo flute. It's very eerie, but it's also very calming in its, in its sorrowful tone, I think. Um, something mournful about a, a wooden flute. Um, but uh, I also like the plot and the action adventure. The fight sequences were just epic. I mean, they were on the same line as 300, which I'm going to review as well, I thought. Uh, they just were nonstop. It, it didn't have any slow parts. I thought it was all plot development, and it had all that supernatural in involvement as well. And it just had this otherworldly, ethereal feel that I just loved. And it, it was, to me, it was like ambrosia. It was something I just couldn't get enough of. And I just savored every moment of it. And I was in the moment and uh, just letting it wash all over me. And um, I was in my happy place. <laughs> I was one happy otaku. Um, I just thought that it was truly a gorgeous film, it's absolutely beautiful, and first, hands down, no, no dispute of that. There wasn't any problem with the plot, and I I love the way they made the Tengu look too, because they were accurate on that point. They were accurate with um, so many things. My only um, flaw here was uh, I don't know why Yuki would wear, uh, not Yuki, excuse me, why uh, Miku um, 
had to wear white during her wedding because white's considered bad luck and it's the color of death and mourning. But in looking back, I, I can see why they made that choice, and it, it's really not a nag per se, but it's um, something that I thought, hmm, maybe they were making a point, and those of us out here that are um, well-versed with Japanese culture, yeah, I, I think, hmm, nah, I know why they did that, and yeah, she was not happy about what she was going to have to do for um, um, the land of Akko, but it, it was um, a very um, interesting choice and not a nag at all, just, just a, um, something I wanted to point out. Uh, the, the movie is really quite excellent and, and um, if you love Japanese culture as much as I do, it's, you just have to see it and there are a lot of lines in here that are just really quotable and wonderful and very um, enlightening I think and, and uh, they just give you a, a sense of um, the power of true love and affirmation of humanity that's that's what I thought when I saw this movie it was just an affirmation of uh, honor and, and justice and um, an homage to um, patriotism of one's country and following the Bushido way and I thought ah I just I absolutely loved it because it's you know something that I feel like is part of me because um, I sense that somehow in one of my past lives I was probably Japanese uh, that's I'm not sure why I feel this way, but I, I do, and I really, really, really want to go to Japan and hopefully uh, brush up on what little Japanese I know. I mean, I don't know enough to really speak. I know how to be polite. I know how to introduce myself, but other than that, um, I don't know how well I would do, but I can speak with an accent, so at least I would be authentic, but it's it's a it's a goal that I know is reachable and someday I'll get there and I know that and uh, if you haven't seen this yet I I highly recommend it to you if you like action adventure if you like romance if you like the idea of the um, otherworldly or supernatural this movie is definitely going to be your cup of green tea I can guarantee you this it is just so um, remarkable. It really is. It just leaves you with just this sense of I have witnessed something absolutely uncanny here and I am so inspired by it and I'm glad I saw it because now I can definitely continue writing the story I'm working on. But it has absolutely nothing to do with Japan or Japanese culture. It's just it's going to give me more uh, fuel to write more um, mystical, uh, write some more mystical elements into my tale. But until I see you next time, everybody, um, live long and prosper, and ciao, today. <laughs>